they should be and when uh, the LARAP should be prepared and sometime LARAP first and sometime DPPT first, it is depend on the project, depend on the case. In the planning of preparation project, sometime is a plan will be funded by the government, but finally change become uh, need the funding. Then uh, LARAP is behind, <laughs> then DPPT. But for, for loan uh, process, normally LARAP first and then need update whenever uh, loan is signed and then uh, sometimes uh, delay and then need update then uh, TVPT is uh, prepared because need for project determination so hopefully it's clear now okay thank you for all support Pak Rimun. yeah welcome um, Sudah ini mungkin bergerak terus. Apa kita mulai ya? Mas? So it's already uh, move. I can see ada uh, number of participants already up. Uh, so shall we uh, start? Uh, Mas Usman, monitoring. Biasanya peserta itu bergerak sambil jalan. So uh, usually once we start, then a participant will keep joining. Mas Usman belum confirm. Mas Usman. Yeah. Because I believe uh, but we also have a short of time. Uh, Pak Usman just replay that uh, he already uh, joined. Uh, good morning, uh, Pak Rimun. Oh, we've been waiting for you. Hello, Bu. How are you? Are you healthy? Uh, Pak Dwi, how are you? Good morning. Uh, apologize, I'm not uh, able uh, to turn on my uh, video. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Pak Dwi. Good morning, Abu Dayu. Morning, Bananing. How are you? So once again, I uh, thank you very much, Apadwi. So uh, please uh, go ahead, Aparimun. Good morning, Parimun. Good morning, Pak Bagia. Pak Bagia now uh, already a super uh, expert. He uh, just yesterday interviewed me in English. Okay, Mas Heru. Uh, All right, uh, Mas Heru, uh, permission. Uh, I will uh, open our uh, event this morning. So please, over to you, Pak Heru. risk assessment and guarantee product for land risk in infrastructure development. Uh, today's program aims to increase the capacity of the participants, especially of social and environmental safeguard specialists and consultants in dealing with issues related to the land acquisition and risk assessment, as well as guarantee products for infrastructure development in order to contribute to the implementation of environmental and social aspects in Indonesia. And the speakers today are Pak Dwi Susanto and Pak Satoshi Ishihara. Pak Dwi Susanto is from PT Penjaminan Infrastruktur Indonesia. His current post in, his, in the company is the head of environmental and social division. He will be sharing with us information and his experience in infrastructure development and PT PEE roles for sustainable infrastructure development. And the other speaker is Pa Satoshi. Uh, uh, he is a senior social development specialist at the World Bank Group. Moving on to the timetable for today's event. So as you can see here, we have quite a tight round, round, rundown on our table today. The whole event is only one and a half hour total just as we would spend on a cafe, right? So we are now at the opening session. 
which takes about five minutes. And then Pak Satoshi would deliver a little a welcoming speech for five minutes. And after that, we would come to the main event. That is the presentation by Pak Dwi Susanto for about 35 minutes or so. And then Pak Satoshi would complete the presentation with a commentary to the delivered material. Following after that, we would have a 30 minute question and answer session. Uh, let me remind you, all participants, that you don't have to wait until the presentation is over to ask a question. Simply put your question in the chat column as soon as you have something you need to get answered to or clarified. Somebody will monitor the chat column and relay your questions to the speakers accordingly. Um, this is the code of conduct we all hope to abide today. Uh, basically, we encourage all participants to maintain professional and civil discourse throughout the event and to limit distractions by silencing your smartphones or other gadgets around you. And we would like to ask for your help in keeping the background noise to a minimum. And to please use the chat feature in Zoom to, to ask questions and leave comments throughout the event. For some additional information, all of you are required to fill in the attendance list, which link will be given in the chat column. We would need this attendance list to base the making of e-certificate on, and we will be emailing your respective e-certificates. So please make sure to check that chat column from time to time. Okay. And we also encourage you, whenever possible, to use the Zoom background that is also provided in the chat column. And just so all you know, uh, we are live streaming this event to the ESS TV YouTube channel. So we could have a trail of documentation, some stuff sort, that we could refer to after the event is complete. And lastly, this event is equipped with interpretation feature for Bahasa and English mm -hmm. languages. Feel free to use it as per your need. And for those who are not yet familiar, uh, PT PII or PT Penjaminan Infrastruktur Indonesia is a state-owned enterprise under the Ministry of Finance, whose job is to provide guarantees for government infrastructure projects that is developed under public-private partnership. PPP scheme. And this is the statistic for the participants. Uh, there are 70 people uh, that is registered up until this morning. But of course, the number will increase in last minute, just like always. And some of them are from abroad and come from various institutions uh, of private sector, universities, appraisals consultants, and the government. And that's it. Uh, without any further ado, let's have a fruitful and meaningful cafe talk. I would be handing the control over to Pak Rimun to start moderating this event up until the end. Thank you. And Pak Rimun, if you please. Thank you, Pak Eru. Uh, please. Uh, and your share screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, everyone, thank you. My name is uh, Rimon Wibowo. Um, as a chairman of National uh, Network Learning Center for Social and Environment Sustainability, uh, who held this event. It is the first cafe talk, yeah. Uh, Bapak Ibu, kita campur-campur bahasa Inggris dan bahasa Indonesia ya. Jadi jangan terlalu tegang. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, in a boat uh, English and Indonesian. So, no need to be a uh, very formal on this event. Any participant from abroad, then we mix in bahasa and then uh, this Zoom. Uh, also provide interpreter put in Bahasa and also English. Okay, thank you uh, again, Pairu. 
this is the first cafe talk, uh, yeah, and we are uh, here. We'll discuss uh, interesting topic, yeah. I think risk assessment and quality product for land risk in infrastructure development. As we know, infrastructure is very important, and uh, unfortunately, the budget of government is limited. And that is a very interesting scheme, yeah, uh, to invite the business entity to join and and develop this infrastructure mm -hmm. with a PPP scheme, yeah, private, uh, public private partnership. And this business entity will will guarantee by uh, this institution, uh, PEE. Uh, uh, do it one of representative for for this PE. Yeah, we'll talk this uh, topic. Yeah, and the second speaker is uh, Pak Satoshi Isihara. Uh, he is a senior social development specialist from the World Bank. Uh, he is a very large uh, experience, uh, include uh, this uh, scheme, this scheme, yeah, uh, PPP scheme, and we'll uh, share his experience from the global experience will uh, complement what part we uh, presented in this uh, cafe talk. Yeah, I think to short uh, time, uh, I will introduce Pak Dwi as mentioned by Pak Eru. Pak Dwi is the vice president of PT Penjaminan Infrastructure Indonesia, Indonesia Infrastructure Quarantine Fund, or IEEGF, yeah, Environment and Social Division. Uh, the PPE is special mission vehicle under the Ministry of Finance with the mission of enhancing the completion of sustainable infrastructure development in Indonesia by providing guarantee and add value. Well, the whole degree from uh, University of Indonesia in biology, mathematics, and natural science faculty, and also alumni from the Bogor uh, Agriculture University or IBB University right now, yeah, in natural resource and environment management. It isn't the same with me. <laughs> Just so. Yeah, thank you, Padre, for <clears throat> your time and then uh, sharing in this in the first cafe talk. Uh, Right now, the time is over to you, Padre. Please, about uh, 35 minutes, yeah. Thank you, Pak. Okay, uh, terima kasih, Pak Rimun. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat um, pagi, salam sejahtera. So yes, uh, thank you very much, Pak Rimun. Uh, greetings to all of us. So beforehand, I would like uh, to say uh, thank you for the opportunity for uh, sharing in this uh, special forum. And uh, yes, uh, apparently I'm an alumni for uh, first batch of NLC in uh, Yogyakarta. So I'll give uh, my uh, respect uh, to you, uh, Budayu, and uh, other Budayu are uh, also a uh, one uh, of the uh, pioneer uh, that for uh, the pay PE in our bank and. Uh, presentation with me. This is a great honor for me, Pak. Thank you, Pak Satoshi. Okay, I uh, will share my presentation. A minute. Eh. Ya, yeah, tadi udah nampak, Pak. Okay. Terlihat, Pak. Ya, yeah, okay. Terlihat. Oke, okay. uh, baik. Selamat pagi Bapak Ibu semua. Jadi untuk pagi ini uh... right, a very good morning to all of us and uh, this uh, morning I as a representative from uh, PT PI, I will try uh, to share uh, regarding of this uh, risk uh, assessment and a guarantee product for land risk in infrastructure development. That uh, later we will have a discussion and uh, this uh, material uh, regarding of uh, the profile of uh, PT PE as an uh, introduction for all of you, and then uh, related with 
this uh, infrastructure uh, development and uh, the scheme of uh, PPP, like I've been uh, mentioned by uh, Pa Raymond, uh, why uh, this uh, PPP, why we need infrastructure and also uh, the support of uh, government in form of a guarantee that is a mandate to a PT APEI as a single and uh, giving uh, the guarantee for a uh, development infrastructure project. And then at uh, the last one, we are uh, going uh, to share how are uh, the process of this uh, guarantee uh, for uh, the land risk. Hopefully through this uh, sharing uh, session, uh, I hope that uh, all of you can, give a, can get a brief uh, description from uh, all of you, how we push uh, this infrastructure uh, development to bring a lot of advantage for our community or the people. And should there is any um, comment or uh, feedback regarding of the material, uh, we are able uh, to discuss it uh, during uh, the Q&A. So uh, first of all, we are from uh, PTPI or Indonesian um, Infrastructure a Guarantee a Fund. So this is a 100% uh, owned uh, by uh, government of Indonesia under uh, the Ministry of uh, Finance so we've called a special mission vehicle of uh, Indonesia's MOF. The first one is uh, actually we are as a catalyst uh, for infrastructure uh, development uh, to increase uh, the life uh, quality of people of Indonesia. One among others that is a mandate uh, to us is about uh, the giving of uh, the guarantee for uh, the project, infrastructure project under a uh, PPP uh, scheme. And then uh, by time, we've also given other uh, mandates. <clears throat> the second is uh, regarding a national strategic uh, project uh, guarantee. They are able uh, to uh, gain uh, the guarantee uh, for related with the political uh, risk that uh, might uh, happen and uh, execute. We as a single windows are to, uh, to guarantee uh, we can uh, give uh, the, and we also uh, got a uh, demanded uh, for uh, giving a uh, credit a uh, guarantee for a state owned uh, company. This is uh, related with a uh, direct uh, lending and a uh, government of Indonesia's assignment. We also have other uh, mandates as um, implement to implement uh, this uh, PPP to uh, prepare and then uh, also uh, accompany. So uh, this uh, support uh, for uh, the support uh, for uh, PJPK and then uh, the implementation uh, could be from uh, PT PI or PT SME. In the last uh, two years, we have this as an impact of for, from this uh, pandemic era. Regarding uh, the PAN uh, program, we are also giving the credit uh, guarantee toward uh, the company that uh, got uh, the impact through pandemic. So this a characteristic of this a credit guarantee is a temporary. There is a several a company that already a got a this a guarantee and a hopefully <coughs> this a can bring a better a atmosphere a to the company Indonesia and I talk about a those a prepared a project a can get the financing as well. This is uh, from, we have a three uh, main point as a PTPI roles. The first one, we are uh, developing an ecosystem and a network. 
So this uh, developing uh, ecosystem and network is a part of uh, accelerate uh, the development of infrastructure infrastructure so a uh, building uh, infrastructure it's not as easy as we talk not everyone uh, can uh, believe uh, can accept uh, this uh, infrastructure uh, development uh, using other scheme uh, than uh, using the state uh, budget so we need uh, to raise uh, the awareness that uh, all the parties will understand what is uh, the objectives of a uh, PT PE and uh, those uh, alternatives uh, scheme of uh, financing. So talking about this, uh, we in uh, PT PE we also have this is uh, oh, some a uh, certain uh, deficient uh, to uh, regarding a uh, building uh, capacity. So we have this IIGF Institute division. This is uh, conduct as a training. They uh, provide uh, the training uh, for other uh, professional uh, to become a pra practitioner that is a certificate, international certificate. And then we also have a collaboration with a university, about a 35 a university throughout Indonesia to conduct other research from a regulation aside and also uh, other uh, research uh, that uh, support uh, the building or uh, the infrastructure uh, development. This is also a part, uh, or we can call it uh, initiative from uh, several uh, stakeholder or uh, government of uh, Indonesia to uh, facilitate And uh, at this time, we also have the new uh, initiative. We have uh, this uh, POJOK uh, corner that is uh, one of the uh, representative in the uh, office for uh, the stakeholders uh, that uh, want to know what is uh, this uh, PPP scheme and all. And then uh, the second, we are uh, able uh, to convey uh, this uh, project uh, development uh, facility to uh, give uh, the preparation and then uh, and then at the last, as a core business, we are uh, giving the guarantee uh, provision toward uh, this infrastructure uh, project that is uh, use this uh, PPP or a non-PPP, like a direct lending, for example. So generally, this is our uh, core uh, business of uh, PT uh, PEE. We are having uh, these uh, three uh, main pillar. The first one is a developing ecosystem and network, project development facility, and then a guarantee a provision. Uh, so based from the Bapanas development partner planning, the need for the infrastructures is around 437 US billion dollars. Actually, now the ability of the government, the estimations are just only at, yeah, around 21%. And from the BUMN is around 21%. There's also a role from the private sectors, but then how the government could draw or attract the private sectors to join in financing the infrastructures project in Indonesia. So that's why one of the schemes that can be done 
is through the cooperations between the governments and the enterprise or SPBU and yeah as we can see here there are 20 sectors divided into three part the first one is through connectivity such as transport road oil and gas renewable energy ICT and then there's also infrastructures aims to for the social infra and public utility this sectors with private enterprises are actually quite many. But yeah, we have a quite a lot of PPP now, such as the Toll Project and SPOM Project, and as well as Airport and Trained. And this is just a little bit of overview about how PPP or KPBU is become one of the scheme in partnership beyond state budget or the regional budget. And now we are trying this new alternative of funding to make sure that the infrastructures will be developed but will not burden the state budget or the regional budget. And actually the budget, the concept is that to shift from previously it is a constructions or procurement into a service. So how at the beginning we want to build a school from the development, from the procurement, bidding and operating, it's done by the government. But then now the scheme change, the planning is in the government and then for the constructions and for the funding, for the design and management, it will be given to the private sectors because they're considered to be more expert to manage those risks. But then what's become the measurements by the government? So the government will pay the services, sorry, yeah, services provided by this enterprise. So there are several things that's become a standard needs to be fulfilled by this enterprise. And after that, there's also risk allocations. What are the risks that can be managed or take over for the parties who are expert on this. So the government role as a regulator, of course, they're the one who can manage the risk related to the funding and constru constructions, design, operating and maintenance. The risk become the risk will be managed by the private entities. Now the government has provided services, such as like what I mentioned earlier, yeah, related to the commitment of BGPK and how they need to commit with the scheme of government corporations with business entity. And for the project feasibility, of course, there's also a facility of funding. The MOF established SOE in order to provide sovereign guarantee and long-term financing support. And currently, 
Yeah, as you all know, ladies and gentlemen, for the PSN project, it is supported by the land support. They were given a duty to make a finance in providing the land support for the PSN project. And this is just a little bit of overview from several alternative. And this is the PPP as alternative to infrastructures development financing. And this is comparing several infrastructure financing scheme and the orange one done by the private sectors. The one in green is PPP. Yeah. There's a resallocations principle. And it used to be the product are physical, but now it turns into services. So it's not a privatization, but how the government can still get the services from the infrastructures that are being established, but the risks related to the constructions and other, it's become the responsibility of the business entities. And This is a little bit of basic information about what's actually the PPP and to which parties that can be the one who can be responsible of this project. So PPP is providing the infrastructures with the general interest referring to the specifications that has been set out by PGPK by sharing the risk principle. And it is based on contracts where it clearly stated the rights and the mandate for each parties, be it from the government or from the business entities. And the scope are very right. There some design to build, transfer, or only design, build, finance, maintain, and transfer. So it's just based on what the governments need. And for PGPK or there's so many parties will be included and there's also a responsible actor for the cooperations project or PGPK. Let's say from the Ministry of Public Works with the Ministry of Transport for example. There will be a main responsible actors for all of this project. And next, okay, this is a little bit of overview about how the PPP project and what's the business model looks like. So PPP, like what I mentioned earlier, it is a cooperation between the government and the business entities, right? And business entity consists of sponsor, the one who invests the equity, and then after that, 
they're also a lender that will get a financial support from banking banking infrastructures and they're the one who will provide the SPV or the project company and then the business entity and the responsible actors will make a PPP in agreement PPP agreement and we are as the guarantee we will provide a guarantee for the financial risk that will emerge through this PPP. So we have an agreement with the project company or the project implementers by providing a guarantee for the financial risk that will be emerged. But then we have certain mechanisms. If there is a failure from the responsible actors of corporations project and they cannot fulfill their duties, then we pay claimed for that failure. We have an, um, act mechanisms called recourse agreements with the responsible actor for corporations project. This is one of mitigations or ring fencing of the state budget. Let's say that if there is a default or a failure by the governments providing the financial support, then it's not directly impacting the state budget. It goes through us first. So we can request a billing on the claim payment to the responsible actors for the corporation's project. It is also aimed that to mitigate the moral hazard and they can do the mitigations of the financial risk that might be emerged. So PII company as a guarantee, we can also do a co-guarantee. First of all, by working together with the Ministry of Finance as one of the owner of the PI company and as the state treasurer. And then we can also do the co-guarantee with the multilaterals, could be with ADB, exec, and so on and so forth. With this scheme, it is expected that from the investor side, they will have a comfortability to do the investment because there is a certainty that the financial risk by the government, if there is a fail, failure emerge, then we can handle by the PI company. Okay, I'll continue the presentations. And this is a little bit of pictures about how the PPP project will be implemented and of course, it is in line with the process of preparing the project. Generally, the PPP project are four, start from the planning, preparing the study, and then to ensure that value for money is right. And then we are going to the next step, which is preparing making the outline business case and final business case, OBC and FBC. After that, we are doing the transactions for bid preparations and lender coordinations based on request of proposal. After the bidding process is done, and then we'll determine who will be the winner and then 
the cooperation's agreement will be made. After that, we will also do a screening process, meaning that, of course, all of the requirements are being fulfilled. After that, we mitigate the risk to ensure that when the when we execute the project, those risks has been identi well identified and the mitigations plans are already in place. To get a guarantee from the PI company, we have a step called appraisal. In the appraisal step, we are trying to see the feasibility of the project. And we have seen from so many sides, from the legality, from the risk factors, and from financial, technical, and as well as the social and environmental aspect after the appraisal process are done. And then we will continue to the structuring project to make sure that the project are already well managed and as well as to ensure the project mechanisms will be implemented. And by the time the structuring is done and then we already make sure that this project worth to be given a guarantee, then there will be a grant. This grant will also be included to the RFP documents in the bidding process. And this is as an information or reference for the bidders that this project will be guaranteed by PI company for all the financial risks by the responsible actors for coordination corporations project. And this after that, there will be a signing of agreement. And then after that, we will go to the monitoring project. The objective is that we are, as the guaranteed, we support the responsible actors for a corporation's project to make sure that the project well mitigated and well planned. So all of the financial responsibility then from the side of the government, a government can get the services and output based on what has been stated in the agreement. And these are the risks that can be guaranteed by, risks covered by PI company that can guarantee it. And this is the applications of free allocations in PPP infrastructures project. So in the constructions and pro-constructions and operations, let's say that there is a discriminatory change in law or project specific, and there's also delay in necessary approval or certain permit that hampered the project implementations, and then early terminations by the uh, GCA. Related to the land, yeah. There's also a race about the delay of land acquisitions process. and how the GCA able to make sure when the land is ready in a certain amount of time. And after that, during the operations, there are also payment risks by the scheme of user charge in PDAM. or spam project and also tariff adjustment risk, specifically in the toll um, project. Okay, next. 
I would like to discuss a little bit about the land risk and currently has been carried out. So to explain a little bit more about the process, how to gain the guarantee from the PI company. To get that, of course, basically, there should be a proposal from the GCA to us, to the PI company, to request the guarantee of the financial risk. Based on this proposal, we will do an evaluation and the process is like what we can see here. There is appraisal process, appraisal process. It is aimed to make sure that the project is worth and then able to fulfill the economic aspect and the, the GCA aspect has fulfilled the requirements and then as well as able to fulfill the environment and social standard of BI company. This appraisal process also to make sure that the project can be implemented based on the GCA capacity. So this PPP already fulfilled or already seen the study value for money yeah, and the risk allocations has been done thoroughly after the appraisal process is done and the result will be the basis or will be the reference in the structuring process. Of structuring the guarantee from BI company. So the structuring process is to make sure about the result of appraisal and the compensations mechanisms and so on and so forth. After that, at the end, there will be a finalizations of the uh, agreement. So the bottom line is that our agreement is assessor or mirroring from the agreement of the KPB. And this is the integrations of ESG in guarantee process. Yes, we have ESMF or Environmental and Social Management Framework, and it is part of the capacity building. And at the beginning of the initiations of BI company, we are also supported by the World Bank. And Ibudayu helped us a lot. We have a framework how the assessment aspect on environmental and social management framework in providing a guarantee in the infrastructure project. One of the things that we want to see is about the involuntary resettlement. In standard, yes, we are now comply with the regulations in Indonesia. For the land acquisitions, we refer to the government regulations year 2021, but then if the business entity Let's say that there will be a multilateral or lenders corporations, then they need to 
fulfill the requirements of the ASMV so that the gap or the requirements that there will be needed done by the business entity. But then in the land acquisitions, there should be a fulfillment to the regulations in Indonesia. It is to ensure that during the appraisal and then the risk mitigations plan up until the project monitoring, this aspect has been fulfilled For other land, uh, these are given uh, for other highway up uh, project. For uh, this uh, highway uh, sectors, uh, usually uh, the land uh, needed is uh, quite a uh, big. So this uh, process of uh, the land acquisition usually uh, take a lot of uh, time and energy. We from uh, uh, PTPI, we usually have uh, the assessment uh, toward uh, this uh, land based on three criteria. So uh, first is uh, the, we will uh, see is it uh, accordingly uh, with uh, the environment uh, should it has uh, this uh, project a uh, priority status there will be uh, some uh, privilege regarding of this to accelerate the uh, project implementation and how are the uh, to identify uh, the land uh, demand uh, for the project and then how are the status or uh, impacted and also uh, the license uh, process. From uh, the estimation of uh, the uh, project, we will uh, see uh, should uh, the analysis already uh, conducted, is it and then The, the method, is it already uh, correct or not? And uh, how about uh, the compensation? Is it uh, already um, fair or uh, reasonable? So uh, currently, the financing for uh, this uh, land acquisition become uh, the responsibility of uh, the government. But then uh, by time there, is, uh, there are uh, several uh, projects uh, that have uh, this unsolicited, unsolicited uh, characteristic uh, conducted for, from uh, the business uh, unit. Should uh, the financing is uh, from a government, we will uh, see how uh, this uh, project is it already included in the uh, financing uh, list? And uh, how, and for example, uh, should uh, the financing a uh, source of uh, from a business uh, unit? It will be uh, disbursed. From uh, the guarantee that we are uh, giving uh, based on the uh, trigger uh, event, should uh, there is a delay, so we just uh, guarantee uh, for other uh, guarantee, but we are not a uh, guarantee that uh, the delay is uh, because of other uh, financing or other uh, inability of other uh, business unit. 
we will uh, also consider uh, the timeline from our government and also for other business uh, unit uh, to collaborate. Um, the timeline, is it uh, quite uh, reasonable or not? From uh, the demand of uh, this uh, land, uh, how much is uh, the, the work of a uh, land? And then uh, is there any uh, forestry uh, land? We will uh, try to assess and uh, see uh, through those uh, risks. Then uh, the last one. We will uh, see uh, the human uh, capital or a PJPK in this uh, land acquisition process. What we would like to inform is uh, how uh, the process uh, for uh, the identification and uh, risk uh, mitigation. From a uh, PTPE uh, side, we using uh, several uh, tools. We will uh, conduct uh, this uh, risk uh, mitigation based on the analysis that already uh, conducted uh, by uh, PJPK, and we will we will uh, make sure this uh, risk uh, mitigation uh, plan it's uh, exactly, and then uh, it is uh, able uh, to be applied. And once uh, the project already on assigning a process or uh, got other uh, financing uh, source, we can hope uh, help uh, PJPK to uh, drafting uh, their uh, key risk indicator that uh, we are uh, able uh, to uh, monitoring and also uh, managing the uh, project uh, risk. we can uh, see uh, the risk of mitigation and all. This is also act as an alarm system for a PJPK. So we, uh, PTPE, we are uh, help uh, as a risk manager for a PJPK to make sure that all the risk uh, able uh, to mitigate uh, before uh, the PJPK uh, downfall. This is uh, actually illustration uh, how uh, the, the guarantee uh, toward uh, the delay or uh, the land uh, risk that uh, this uh, land acquisition for uh, the highway. If we may uh, illustrate this, Once um, PPJT, because we are talking about a highway, they uh, already uh, got uh, the proposal uh, from uh, the business uh, unit, and then uh, it's a sign to make it uh, effective uh, for uh, the guarantee. One of uh, the uh, requirement is a uh, government already uh, have uh, this uh, BAPT. that uh, regarding of the uh, target of uh, this uh, land acquisition, it will be assigned uh, by a government and then representative by uh, PPJT, uh, Bina Marga, and uh, also from uh, BPN. From uh, the business uh, unit, uh, the one uh, that will assign is uh, from uh, their uh, directors. So in this uh, BAPT, It will be uh, stated for uh, the handover of the land. Once uh, this uh, BAPT already assigned, the time uh, estimation, when uh, the government will hand over uh, the, the land is uh, actually based on uh, the pen law. And uh, once, uh, let's say, a uh, government, I uh, say it will be on uh, three years, they will hand over uh, the land. But again, uh, once is uh, three years, 
but then our government are not yet are completed and able uh, to hand over the land. They have uh, some kind of like a grace uh, period on uh, for uh, six months. And then uh, they will, this will uh, have an impact of our cash uh, compensation. Why uh, there is a compensation, a cash compensation? Because of uh, this uh, delay uh, from a business unit, uh, they have the possibility of a uh, big loss. That uh, previously uh, they already are uh, bidding uh, for the contractor and so, but uh, then uh, they are, uh, land is not ready yet. So this uh, cash compensation will be accounted uh, with uh, the inflation in that a uh, certain uh, area. So the guarantee will be uh, hand over per uh, section. So it will uh, assess uh, the condition whether uh, the highway. Sometimes it is not uh, run all at once. So uh, the first, uh, second, and uh, then a uh, third section, and then it will be uh, separated into uh, the next uh, phase as well. So once uh, this uh, case of uh, compensation arise, And uh, should there will there is a delay from our government side, then uh, the company have uh, the rights uh, to a uh, demand for that uh, compensation. But uh, they are uh, able uh, to claim it once uh, they have uh, this uh, SLO. So uh, should uh, they are not uh, give uh, or have uh, this uh, SLO, they are not able uh, to claim. So after uh, this uh, six months and then our uh, government are not yet um, clear. Government have another uh, 12 months. So here in this phase of this 12 months, the compensation is a non-cash. It's like the extension of a concession and or other accounts. And then after a Terima kasih Pak Dwi eh, atas uraiannya. Pak, intinya eh, PPP, PII hadir ya. Uh, the main thing is uh, PT PII is there uh, to give a uh, guarantee uh, to what are uh, the business of the third uh, party. So PTPE uh, exists uh, to give uh, ease of mind and a uh, guarantee, uh, several uh, guarantees uh, that have been uh, explained. And uh, several uh, fiscal tools. So that the business unit uh, can uh, convince uh, to it could be a PDF. or VGF and then at the last uh, that are uh, being uh, described a uh, very a uh, detail is other uh, support. I think uh, this is a uh, quite a uh, detail and uh, this is interesting for the business unit. Once uh, they got a uh, participate in this uh, PPP scheme. Next. 
I will uh, give a time uh, before a Q and A for a. Uh, Okay, so I wasn't aware that I was. <laughs> I've been listening, but I wasn't. I didn't hear the the request. Can you hear me, Agreement? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pak Dewey, for the very interesting presentation about the way the the land acquisition risk is managed and the, the PPP arrangement in Indonesia and overall PPP arrangement in Indonesia. Uh, kind of unique uh, in terms of specifics, but overall, there's nothing really unique in, in the way what you said from global PPV arrangement perspective. Uh, you know, just I have a couple questions to you for clarifications. So one thing is, you know, the I think it's going to be very important uh, to address the issues of some gaps in you know, the requirements on land acquisition between national standards, international standards, as in Indonesia, embarking, you know, the, the trying to achieve energy transitions, a lot of financing need to come from outside of the country, international sources, not only the World Bank, ADB, but IFC and some other private banks, which may uh, apply, use internet the, the equator principles. And essentially that means IFC standards. That means, there are gaps yeah, between uh, in the way that land regulation is conducted up international standards uh, from their standard perspectives. How, how would you address that gap that may happen? Because at the time of the PPP preparation, you may not really know who may be the private entity, who may be partnering with the government entity. Now then the private party may need financing, uh, loan financing or whatever financing, and they may get some financing from international sources, IFC or Equator banks. And then all of a sudden, then the, 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 the private entity need to comply with international standards. And that may come late in the game after <clears throat> everything might have been done. So how do you normally address this gap between the international standards and national standards that may become clear and relevant only during the late stage of the PPP preparations, you know, only after, well, essentially after the PPP partner concessionaire become known, and then they get the financing from particular financing sources. That's one question. And then the delay that often happens, and you describe the examples of the delay that may happen, and then that may lead to cancellation. How do you, and it seems like you guarantee, provide guarantee against the, the land acquisition risk. How do you hedge the, 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 the land acquisition implementation delay? You know, in a way, delay often happens for land acquisition, but you know, you don't really know initially how big the problem might be, and how big the past the legacy issues might be. So how do you actually hedge the, the, the risks of delay in land acquisition that may not be known upfront initially based on your, in your initial screening and so on, because issues may become known in, uh, as, as land acquisition process continues. Yeah. And then the question, big issue is there's a time lag the often time lag between when the land acquisition is conducted by the government and when the private you know party come in to start the construction and then you know the coming back to the issue of the gap between international standards and national standard the longer the time passes between when the land acquisition was conducted originally and when private entity come the more difficult to determine if how the land acquisition has actually been conducted. You know, people might have left the land, people might have, you know, the, the, the spent the, the, the spent the compensation they received, but con the documentation may not be proper. It may be very difficult to reconstruct how the land acquisition has been conducted to, to the satisfaction of the international financier. Yeah, so how do you address when there's a significant gap exists between when land acquisition conducted and when the private entity come in, particularly 
when international financier is in place. And this leads to another question of documentation. Again, the documentation is key from international financiers' perspective. They need to verify uh, that everything is done according to the standards, right? That means a lot of documentation needs to be there. But oftentimes when land acquisition is conducted according to national standards, documentation is found between. And I have seen cases where the private investors or the financier have difficulty convincing the government to share the document. Maybe everything was done properly. Maybe everything is done perfect. But in the absence of documentation, you know, it's 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 very difficult to convince international financier. Yeah. So the question of documentation. Yeah. And then last but not least, any grievances for insufficient compensation that is seen from the perspective of landowners. How do you, what is your experience in terms of managing such grievances because of insufficient compensations? And who going who may provide additional financing to fill the gap? If you find there's a legitimate claim for insufficient compensation based on your assessment, are you able to tell the government to top up compensation? Or are you going to tell the, 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 the private entity to top up compensation? Or maybe you cover the cost from whatever the guarantee you provide. I don't know. But can you tell us some experience on this regard? But anyway, thank you very much. It was a very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Pak Satoshi. Uh, Pak Dwi, kalau kalau saya tangkap. So, uh, Pak Dwi, if uh, I uh, from uh, my side. Kalau saya tangkap, ini maaf ya, saya confused dengan anu suara translator gimana ya? I'm uh, a bit uh, confused with the translation. Uh, how should gak, I? Gak. Maksudnya gini, Mbak, maaf. Ini suaranya jadi ganggu saya. Gimana ya? Tadi biasanya kan nggak kedengeran saya. Uh, Pak Kriman, sorry. Can I just say just one last point? And then I want to actually show some picture. Okay, am I able to put up some... Can I share screen? Okay, okay please, please. Ini sambil nunggu ya. Ini translationnya kedengar oleh saya, jadi saya ngomong. Can you see this? This is the picture that I always show when we talk about PPP. PPP is not a scheme when the government can dump all responsibility to the private entities and feel happy about the fact. When when there's a problem happening to the private sector side, the problem is eventually going to happen to the public sector side. Yeah. So private public public private partnership is a partnership. Both the government side and private side uh, share the responsibility and and the fate of success or failure. Yeah. Like when there's a boat is sinking because there's a hole on one side, the other side cannot feel happy because the hole is on the other side. Eventually, the boat will sink. This is a scheme. This is essentially about the PPP. Oftentimes, in many government countries, governments feel, you know, that as if they are able to dump all responsibility to the private entities and forget about all the risks, including land acquisition risk. But oftentimes, that's going to bite back to the government eventually when problem cannot happen. And land acquisition risk is something that private entity cannot solve on their own without the help of the government. Sorry, let me stop here. Just wanted to show this picture. Okay, okay, interesting illustration, Pak. Ya, sekali lagi Pak Dwi mungkin sudah bisa nangkap ya, tapi mungkin poin dari uh, beberapa komen so, Pak. So once again, Dwi. I believe that uh, Pak Dwi already uh, catch uh, the question. Ya, ya. Uh, jadi uh, pengalaman dari PEI itu bagaimana Pak? Me so how are the uh, experience from uh, PEI to handle? Ini kenapa ya? Anu transisinya sudah saya mut back original kok keluar terus ya? So how you overcome uh, this uh, gap because of the time uh, difference of the sequencing, like uh, the land acquisition at uh, the uh, beginning, but then I uh, found uh, should there is a gap. Uh, how does a uh, pay also controlling in this uh, land acquisition uh, process? Is it already uh, goes accordingly uh, with uh, the safeguard uh, principle uh, because we believe that pay also adopt uh, this uh, safeguard 
again, uh, we are uh, talk uh, if like this uh, business entity, they also invited uh, from other uh, international lender. What's uh, the, the solution? Is it uh, from the beginning uh, PEE also accompanying at uh, that? And uh, even though uh, they also uh, comply with the national uh, policy and once uh, they invited uh, for uh, the institution or agent, international agency, uh, should uh, there is any uh, grievance, uh, then uh, where uh, to uh, demand uh, for the top, top up? Is it for the business entities or uh, government instead? So please over to you, Padwe. But we are uh, in the position of uh, as a guarantor for the uh, uh, PJPK or government side part. So uh, for uh, land acquisition process and land acquisition uh, 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 preparation and process, it will be a responsibility of government by our, or the PJPK uh, GCA. So if uh, we in in the process of the screening project, uh, we uh, will uh, we will uh, screening or analyze the <clears throat> first is the comply with the Indonesia regulation. So if we have some uh, notes or some recommendation, we will uh, uh, send to the GCA to improve the process, but. In the in in the in the end in, in the process, uh, we we uh, we on uh, we still uh, refer to Indonesia regulation, and how about uh, with the gap for the international standard or or uh, lender requirement part? So, because uh, this is yeah this is I I I uh, I will say this is not uh, ideal uh, condition but So if the uh, the investor or, or uh, uh, project company will have uh, international uh, lenders and they need to fulfill the international standard. For the gap, it will be responsibility of the investor part because in the in the in the in the beginning or in the in the preparation stage, a government will be uh, responsible. Uh, they they will. Uh, prepare the uh, land acquisition planning and everything based on Indonesia standard. That's that's the uh, that's the condition. But uh, we have some challenge now because uh, for the financing uh, land acquisition financing uh, from maybe ten year past, uh, it uh, the local. The local bank or the local company, uh, sorry, the local investor, they can uh, they can financing by themselves. But in the meantime, uh, in the um, uh, right now, we have the limited capacity, and government uh, realize we need uh, more global uh, investment, and for that, uh, we need. Uh, uh, to fulfill international best practice for. So right now, maybe uh, Pak Satoshi know the process for ESG framework, but in the Ministry of Finance, that's the that's the process or and our 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 uh, uh, work together with the SMV Pak to push all the gap right now to put in the ESG framework. Pak. So in the future, we hope all the gap with the land acquisition and the other requirement related with uh, environmental or social uh, standard will be put in ESG uh, framework in the future. And all the GCA, when they prepare the uh, uh, PPP project, they will fulfill that requirement part. That's, that's my, my uh, question and my answer now, <laughs> like that. 
Jadi uh, Pak Rimun mungkin sedikit ini ya. Jadi memang untuk saat ini kondisinya. So uh, Pak Rimun, uh, now the condition is uh, not yet uh, ideal like I've been mentioned by uh, Pak Satoshi. So we as a guarantee. As a guarantee, and now we are uh, giving uh, for a uh, PJPK or the government to prepare uh, the land uh, based on Indonesia regulation. In case uh, there is a gap uh, related with international uh, standard, let's say, and then uh, this uh, investor uh, can get or try uh, to get uh, international lending. Nah, gap ini nanti akan so uh, this uh, gap uh, will be uh, the responsibility of uh, the investor or other uh, business unit because this is a uh, requirement but uh, the uh, condition at the uh, currently the uh, fiscal uh, capacity for a uh, land this also uh, become a uh, the uh, issue in infrastructure uh, project because of uh, the domestic uh, capacity is a uh, very uh, limited that uh, we a uh, government we uh, have we realize uh, that we need a uh, support uh, from our uh, international uh, best uh, practice and uh, currently we have uh, this uh, initiative for the ESE uh, framework and uh, Pak Satoshi also uh, mentioned uh, that World Bank also support uh, this uh, process in Ministry of Finance and then in the future as a SMV like a PTPI, PT SME regarding with this uh, ESD uh, framework and also with the acquisition for infrastructure a project, how this international best practice can be implemented on our projects. Because if we are still using the Indonesian regulation and there is a gap that appear for financing regarding of the land, it's gonna be difficult to expect for international lender. Jadi ini masih ditanggung. Uh, Thank you, Padui. Okay, so far, it still be born by the partner side, yeah, for the business entity. But for the next future, all of the activity, OBC, FPC, or the project preparations, it needs to be complied with the SMF framework, right, sir? So when they will invest, of course, the documentations and all of that. What's become Pak Satoshi concerns, it's already in line with the international standard, yeah? Thank you, Pak. Pak Heru, does the participants need to ask through the chat? Yeah. Because Pak Dani asked the questions Ada proyek infrastruktur yang gagal mendapatkan penjaminan karena resiko lahan. Yang pertama saya kira tidak perlu dijawab Pak. Tadi sudah dijelaskan. Yang kedua, And ini, yes. Ada proyek infrastruktur yang gagal mendapatkan penjaminan so there's a questions that there is a project that is failed to uh, get this guarantee. Jadi kalau yang tadi kami sampaikan Pak sebenarnya kalau dari sisi apa namanya dari sisi kami kriteria. Yeah, like, our criteria to get this guarantee, of course, they need to fulfill the regulations. Specifically, the regulations for the land acquisitions, right? From the regulations, if everything is clear, then they can fulfill the criteria, one of the criteria. And then after that, we will see the risk of the project itself. Let's say in the past special point of view, it cannot be changed because the lands are in the moratoriums area. So that's one of the challenge, yeah, to provide the guarantee because of course the permit will never gonna be granted. And then from the budget estimations, for example, yeah, they still 
use the NGOP and then the value is very small if it is compared with the mechanism of land acquisitions for general land with um, general compensations value. Yang bisa mengakibatkan lahan itu bisa tidak ter, ter apa bisa tidak apa tidak bisa diserahkan kepada investor atau ke, kepada uh, and it caused the land cannot be handed over selama, to the investors so throughout this time with the proposed project given to us so far yes we provide the guarantee because they fulfill all of the requirements but then in case if there is any GCA proposed the guarantee, but then the land has an uncertainty and then there are risks of land acquisitions that is high. Of course, it could be one of the hindrance for approving the guarantee. Thank you, Parimun. Yeah, the second questions, there's also questions from Pak Dani or Pak Andi, yeah? But yeah, because the time is short. The question is that, yeah, for example, spam or the impacts born to buy these parties, is spam born by these parties, is it needs to be one bundled covered by the PPP or, yeah, From your presentations, I know the difference. Does PEE also guarantee the non-PSN? Non-PSN, artinya yang bukan PSN bisa nggak gitu? Ya, oke. Oke, Pak. Yang pertama, Pak, terkait lingkup project ya, Pak. Oke, so related to the project scope, we are handed over to the GCA, so the owner of the project. Let's say the case is like this. So spam project, the in-tax fund to buy the state budget, and then IPA transmissions and of taker, yes, we will provide the guarantee only for the project, but even though during the evaluations process of the guarantee, we will calculate the interface risk. How is the spec that has been established, whether it's going to be matched with the spec that will be built by the KPBU or the PPP or from the side of the timeline, let's say. And yeah, again, it will be given to the GCA based on their request for the guarantee. So if it is non-PSN, or the national strategic project, of course, it has a privilege, right? And we will see from the rest as well. So let's say the one who proposes the regional government, not the national government. Is there any additional requirements that they need to submit? Because most of the regional uh, infrastructure project lack of funding, let's say, and does they need to go to the same process to Bapanas, to the related ministry, to the Ministry of Public Works? Yes, Parimun. Yes, it should be in line with the regulations. The one that could be the GCA is the related ministry and institutions and the regional government. It could be in the level of district, municipality, or provincial, or the one who are appointed or given a mandate 
for example, like PLN, they're the one who can get the guarantee. But So for this spam project, it is also become a regional project. But all right, thank you very much for those who ask questions, Babani, Buofi, and as well as Iburati. Yeah, thank you very much for your response and questions. Yeah. There's also questions, the mechanisms of the relations of PEE and Elman. Yeah, our relations are, are okay, sir. Yeah, but uh, allow me to elaborate. We are an Elman both under the Ministry of Finance, but we are as the state-owned enterprise. But we just have a different uh, part of the responsibility. Let's say that we have the national strategic project. And during the appraisal or the evaluations of the guarantee, since we are both under the supervisions of Ministry of Finance, we can coordinate with Elman. For example, like with this budget, whether we're ready, because it's part of the risk assessment. Sometimes Alman can say that, yeah, this is too big and probably it will be multi years. And it could be one of the benefits to us all because we both are under the Ministry of Finance and our coordinations with Almans is more likely to ensure that the readiness of budgeting. Ya, mungkin ke Pak Amir ya. Kalau saya salah nanti mohon dikoreksi Pak. Elman itu lebih ke talangan. So Elman. will be providing the bailout funds, actually. And I have questions, actually, whether under the scheme of the uh, PPP, the land acquisition scheme handled by the private sectors, and the private sectors maybe request a bailout to Elman as well. Okay. Okay, Pak. Yeah. Jadi gini, Pak. Kalau kaitannya sama skema pengadaan tanahnya, skema 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 untuk kepentingan umum, ya, Pak. Yeah. So the scheme for the general interest, yeah. The government are the one who needs to do this. There is a scheme where the land finance done by the business entity, but just for the financial, but for the implementers still in the hands of the government. We are, as the one who guarantee, we only guarantee the delay risk due to the postponed of the implementations. And for example, like the finance due to the business entity and their financials not ready and the postponed happen, then we're not going to be able to provide the compensations. So yes, in the early establishment of Almond, we have a mechanisms of bailout funds. We also have a product or services to guarantee the Atas UGR, returned funds. Uh, 
And when Elmond already make a budget, then there will be a reimbursement. We will make sure that the billing by the governments to Elman and all of the requirements are fulfilled, but during the request of billing or the state budget couldn't pay that, then we are going to cover that, sir. So that's the mechanisms. So yeah, they need to calculate very thoroughly, right? Yes. All right, so congratulations to all of business entity. We still have, uh, actually already <laughs> over time, but I think, but do we still have time, Pak? Okay, Pak, Rimun. Okay, uh, yeah, please, uh, like yang dari Indonesia or from foreigner, please, if any question, if any issue regarding uh, this uh, topic. Kalau tidak ada, uh, over to you again, Pak Satoshi. Still any comment? No, I think this is a very interesting question. I think clearly a lot more need to be done to create an enabling environment. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very good news that Minister of Financing really very active in promoting ESG, strategy, framework, manual, all of it will really uh, help improve the situations and enable the more PPP coming in, particularly from international sources, because the country needs a lot of financing from international sources. Uh, a lot of homework needs to be done, but uh, it's a very good, in uh, very interesting uh, to know the existing systems with regard to land acquisition and the PPP. Yeah, yeah, but Satoshi, I'm also waiting for the ESG. Uh, uh, framework in the future, how to fill the gap, yeah, with the basis entity. It is, I think, it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we are happy to support. I mean, the, I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, as you know, we are supporting the Minister of Finance developing the ESG manual for the PPP yeah, yeah. infrastructure construction. But I know Minister of Finance also developing the ESG framework separately, and I think it's good to have the coordination. So. Uh, I'm very happy to help the process uh, if there's any request. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pak Satoshi, uh, Pak Dwi, ada pertanyaan dari Bu Naneng ini. Untuk penjaminan yeah. keadaan tanah, apakah so, ada... So, uh, Pak Dwi, have a question from Abu Naneng. I should there is any uh, any requirement for other land that is uh, free from uh, mobilization of the contractor? Okay, and one more question, Pak. For the land acquisition uh, should be in line with uh, Indonesian should uh, there is any um, upfront uh, is there any uh, sanction, sanction for the guarantee for example the practice in the field working gitu uh, apa atas pasti atas persetujuan apa project proponen gitu di kasus kasus seperti kasus kasus so uh, for uh, these uh, cases what's uh, the act that are uh, being uh, conduct uh, by um, the uh, guarantee sanksinya uh, gitu or uh, should uh, there is uh, any uh, sanction thank you so a uh, first a uh, question from Abu Naning for regarding of uh, the preparedness of the land uh, it is uh, not uh, must be 100 percent uh, free but we can gi give a guarantee for uh, the land that is not yet uh, reached 100 percent but uh, for uh, the highway for uh, the effectivity requirement of uh, from our uh, guarantee PJPK must have uh, the land uh, settlement they have uh, the BAPT. So in a uh, BAPT, we'll uh, give the time. So this uh, will be become uh, under a uh, PJPK. 
The uh, second, there will be a sanction should uh, there is any um, so uh, actually we don't have uh, any uh, authority to stop uh, the project or uh, uh, take our uh, guarantee uh, commitment. We have uh, this uh, GMC. Jika terjadi misalnya tadi pelanggaran yang memang <coughs> itu kaitannya nanti bisa ke legalitas apa namanya ke hukum kita akan menyampaikan. Uh, there is a regarding with the, the legal. Ini adalah salah satu hal yang bisa mengakibatkan uh, proyek itu katakan terhenti. This I can give out the uh, the project I can be a stop, but uh, then uh, the risk that we are guarantee it will be a uh, triggered with uh, those uh, conditions, we can uh, give the input. So that we have a condition uh, can be avoided. And uh, also regarding other legal, it will be uh, given uh, to the related uh, party. This is a very uh, interesting and uh, once the ESG already implemented regarding of the construction uh, cannot uh, be uh, built in the uh, some a certain uh, section of the other land there must be a streamline of a regulation as well once uh, it's adopted by uh, PE all right uh, thank you uh, maximum is uh, nine thirty. So, if Pak Duit still have time, and then uh, the participants still have any issue, please go ahead, uh, raise your hand or or tag in the chat, or you can uh, raise your question directly like Bunaning. Mungkin sambil menunggu participant, apakah? So while uh, waiting uh, for other participant. as uh, the midwife of this uh, uh, PE. So thank you, uh, Pak Rimun, and thank you for Pak Padui for the presentation. So we have a simple uh, question that this uh, IEGF is a uh, birth out. So what I want uh, to ask is that this IIF uh, also uh, support uh, the infrastructure uh, program, especially that are uh, taken uh, by a uh, private uh, sector. How's uh, the coordination in the process of the guarantee, maybe uh, for the same uh, project, or uh, maybe uh, some uh, several that uh, become uh, the priority for the appraisal and other uh, process of this uh, guarantee? How the coordination? Maybe with uh, other instance uh, agencies as well. Yes, Abu Dayu, I thank you very much for the question. So uh, through our communication and coordination, we are uh, quite uh, close with uh, SMP. especially uh, related uh, with uh, the project and uh, financing uh, from uh, IF. But uh, currently, what uh, we've uh, discussed, uh, there is a gap with uh, international uh, best uh, uh, practice, especially for environment and uh, social from uh, Indonesian uh, regulation. Uh, it is a more advanced, and we will see a more a detail. And I should uh, there is uh, any a uh, gap and a uh, require uh, by a uh, financing. It will be a uh, co as a uh, corrective uh, action. 
And that related with uh, appraisal uh, process or uh, due diligence. But uh, up until now, uh, the, the formal and uh, informal. But what we uh, expect uh, all together. Uh, we also uh, realized that uh, there must be one uh, same uh, framework or uh, standard with the SMV. So once uh, this uh, finalized, uh, this uh, can become uh, all together a uh, guidance for uh, the, all the SMV preparation of uh, SMI, and then we guarantee and then uh, IF uh, financing. So this will become one uh, cycle and uh, refer to one uh, guidance for the social uh, safeguard. So there won't be uh, any uh, gap happen. But if we may share that uh, on our uh, side, we have uh, this uh, certain challenge to uh, complete this international uh, best uh, practice. It is uh, actually uh, the role and under the responsibility for uh, all the parties. Again, we will uh, have a uh, one uh, challenge, for example, with a Ministry of Forestry. how uh, they are, are not yet uh, adopt and how uh, they uh, fulfill uh, the other uh, standard. So I think uh, that's all that are uh, now formulated by a uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Finance. Uh, once uh, this uh, finance uh, could encourage all the involved or engage our party. So all this uh, standard is applicable. Uh, thank you, Padui. To Pak Rimun now. So thank you, Abu Dayu. Thank you, Padui, for the response. So I think uh, the, the statement that there is a challenge for the application in international law best practice and the standard. This is uh, might uh, gonna be a uh, face by a uh, related uh, KL, and this going to be a uh, relevant. Statement dari Bu Naning dan Pak Satoshi, ya. Any a uh, statement Pak from uh, Bu Naning and uh, Pak Satoshi multi, uh, apa, multi donor ini, ya. uh, for this a uh, multilateral uh, donor uh, CSS, ya. CSS. have uh, uh, ever. Uh, Pak Satoshi and Bunaning can <laughs> explain what's next, yeah, after after the assessment country safeguard system that has been done, Pak. Please, Bunaning and Pak Satoshi. Well, <coughs> well, the draft has been prepared, and then uh, we are still in the internal discussions on this safeguard framework assessment. Uh, but what I can say is that you know this is. It's to me. It's not really about preparation of a, a report and then do some one dissemination workshop and so on. I really think this kind of workshops, you know, the, to to discuss gaps and then just to you know put the put the put, put the head together of all practitioners how the issues can be addressed both at the practical level. And the regulatory legal levels, yeah, so that we are able to improve our practice, but also engage with the governments to improve the you know, regulatory regul provisions and so on and so forth. My my suggestion really is is NRC continue to organize <laughs> this kind of sessions, oh, and okay. I'm very happy to, for instance, do some sessions on you know particular gaps uh, in particular standards, land acquisition, biodiversity, you know, indigenous peoples. We, we can we can have a very short session focusing on key gaps mm -hmm. yeah, that may be relevant to you know the PPP constructions or whatever else yeah? then raise awareness and then discuss amongst practitioners and possibly policymakers how things can improve and I really think it's very important and timely for Indonesia right now because 
In the US, we need a lot of foreign financing, particularly for energy transition. Uh, so that means a lot of efforts need to be done to, to you know, raise the bar really on environmental social practice. And I think Minister of Finance is aware of it. That's why they really promoting ESG framework, manual and so on and so forth. So I think we are able to, at least from the World Bank side, we will continue to work with the Minister of Finance. Uh, I'm personally involved in this manual preparation, but also happy to engage with any stakeholders to talk about gaps and how gap filling can be done, examples from international and other countries and so on and so forth. And, but you know, in, in the immediate future, I think my recommendation to NLC is to continue doing this cafe to you know, reach out to more people not in the five days full training course, that's really high transaction cost. But this two hour session is not too difficult for a lot of people to participate. So I really encourage you to continue doing this. I'm very happy to help you. Okay, thank you, Pak Satoshi. Uh, yeah, and I, I actually have to go yeah. to another meeting. So thank you very much okay, okay, for okay. and all the participations. Okay, thank, thank you very you much. Satoshi. Very useful. For your thank, time. You. thank you. Thank you. Bu Naning, masih ada yang ingin sampaikan? Ada waktu sedikit nih tentang CSS, Bu. Oh, oke, okay. Pak Rimun. Thank you, Pak Rimun. Uh, from the country safe gas system, actually, this is the very, very long process, Pak. If you remember that we, we carried out, uh, it, it, and we come up with the uh, several agencies, uh, 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 what is like the uh, potential to be to be follow up with the country uh, safeguard uh, system assessment. And based on the country safeguard review, we select then PLN is a uh, is agency that we need to uh, further assess because uh, from the from the review, we the uh, safeguard environmental and social safeguard management uh, practices and also capacity. Uh, all the country safe gas system with the PLNC, PLN agency level has been completed actually in 2019. All the assessment has been disclosed on uh, ADB website. Uh, also the series of the consultation that we carried out uh, both uh, with the government and also with the uh, civil society organization also the uh, university or academician all have been uh, also uploaded on, on our website, Pak. But uh, uh, even uh, the action plan uh, has been also issued by PLN mm -hmm. uh, to how to uh, mitigate, uh, mitigate the gaps between uh, the Indonesian legal framework and also PLN uh, internal regulation with the ADB safeguard policy statement is complete already. However, because uh, there was, you know, that uh, there was very dynamic uh, uh, policy in Indonesia, and we learned also uh, omnibus law was issued also like the a couple years ago, and then um, we uh, considered to. Yeah to what is like to, to postpone this part. So maybe we will discuss uh, again about this one in the yeah. in the in the next the meeting with the government. Okay, okay, thank you Punaning. So I, I agree with Pa Satoshi, uh, NLC will organize uh, this uh, virtual meeting. It is easier for everybody to step by step yeah, talk the gap and how to, to fill the gap not only by Ministry of Finance only who initiate and then hopefully from uh, PUPR, from KLHK, also from PLN and other agency who very heavy in infrastructure activity. So maybe the ESG framework will be applied in Indonesia uh, soon. Yeah, I heard also PLN has a concern this ESG framework also. So actually it is just waiting for the the appropriate time, yeah, Pak pa Dwi. So, so I think we we need to sit together also between uh, EF and also PEI, yeah, because in the same issue I met with Ibu Pinky, Pak pa Yan also have the same problem with the because normally uh, PEI also is syndication uh, funding, yeah, from private bank also from uh, state on uh, bank also but uh, they have no uh, framework 
international framework. So basically, uh, everybody need uh, ESG framework uh, for time being. So NLC will uh, very happy to facilitate this uh, discussion for the next cafe talk. Thank you for everybody, especially for Pa Dwi and Pa Satoshi for this uh, first cafe talk. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution, your sharing, and <coughs> Bunaning and also Bu Dwi and all participants who has contribution in this uh, cafe talk. Yeah, thank you again. My apologies if any mistake, and uh, uh, see you yeah in the next cafe talk. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, Pak Yayan, <laughs> Pak Yayan also uh, join. Yeah. Terima kasih, Pak Rimun. Ya, makasih Pak Dwi, Pak Dwi, terima kasih. Makasih Yan. Makasih Pak Dwi, Pak Rimun, makasih semua, Pak Heru, makasih. Terima kasih semua. Ya, see you for the next uh, cafe talk. Ya. Terima kasih Bu Rati. Ya, makasih. Oh, Pak Pak Heru ada serah terima ini ya? Sertifikat ya? Ya, seharusnya Pak. Oke, <laughs> oke. Okay, okay. Pak, uh, Pak masih ada waktu Pak Dwi? Oh, ya, udah ya. sebentar saja. Oke okay, oke, okay. ya udah nggak apa-apa. Ya, sudah clear pak. Oke okay, oke, okay. nggak apa-apa nggak apa di rangka aja. Ini di Jadi, ya tetap nggak apa. Ya uh, ada sedikit he, apa serah terima e sertifikat ya. Jadi untuk Pak Dwi ya, yeah, first we would like to convey our commendation ya Pak Dwi and gratitude. Uh, Pak Dwi, who has shared with us a lot of invaluable insights and experience in today's topic. So here it is, Pak, your e-certificate. We're going to be emailing you this uh, certificate. <laughs> Thank you, Pak Dwi. And also uh, our gratitude also <laughs> would be conveyed to Pak Satoshi. Uh, for his relentless support to all of the NLC programs and activities. Uh, his uh, wise words also, we appreciate those. Thank you, Pak Satoshi. And this is uh, the e certificate. We will be emailing this to his email address also. And can, can you read it again for Pak Dwi, Pak? I know Pak Eru. I will. Oh, okay. I will screenshot. Forget. Okay. I will. Serve okay. Okay. Let me. Wait. What's up? Just pull. Pak Dwi's e certificate. Sudah Pak. Parimun. There you go. Enggak enggak. Saya mau share. Mau screenshot dulu. Screenshot dulu. Bu. Ke depan. Ke depan lagi. Ke depan lagi. Satu lagi. Satu lagi. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Ya, yeah, thank you, thank you, Pak. Oke, okay, thank you again, Bu Dayu, Bu Neneng, semuanya, Pak Dwi, and uh, Pak Satoshi, and all crew from NRC and Equator for <laughs> helping each other. Thank you, and... Pak Rimun. Thank you okay. all. Thank you. Terima kasih, Ibu. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Selamat pagi. Pak Heru, thank you. Pagi. Ya, semuanya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Bu Dayu. Terima kasih, terima kasih juga, Bu Nani. Terima kasih. Terima kasih dari CMM Team yang telah membantu dan lewat waktu ya. Mohon maaf. Terima kasih. Mohon izin.